William F. Buckley, Jr. Um, I had an opportunity to, uh, he was on Meet the Press uh, on the round table and also on a cable show. And I um, sat next to him at uh, two of these long dinners uh, in, in New York. Al Smith dinner was one of them. Um, and uh, it was extraordinary talking to him because um, he was someone who did not engage in long conversation, but he was the quintessential observer. And when then would come back and just say something that was so spot on. Uh, and I realized that the, the, the suggestion that, well, you know, he was a conservative writer. He was far more than that. He was someone who was a conservative and proud of it, who understood the rhythms and changes in history, that there was a race worth running in 1964 with Barry Goldwater that would probably be unsuccessful, but would lay the groundwork for a successive conservative takeover of the Republican Party and the White House to wit Ronald Reagan, and he was right. It's the reason he ran for mayor of New York to make the case that New York City should not be a, in his words, welfare state. He was an extraordinary, complicated, intelligent, singular force in American life. And I think that when we find that, we should salute it. Uh, I had that opportunity as a very young man when I finished law school to go to Washington and work in the office of Daniel Patrick Moynihan, as someone who worked for four presidents, two Democrats and two Republicans. And one of the greatest nights of my life was to go to dinner with Pat Moynihan and Bill Buckley. I said nothing. <laughs> but here they were, one liberal, one conservative, but two roaring intellectuals who had this deep and abiding and grudging respect for one another, often competitive, trying to show one each other up with a better recall of a certain academic citation. But they, uh, they, they really, truly were good friends, and, and, and they had a level of respect that was something to behold. And uh, I, I think men of that caliber, that quality, are so lacking in our public discourse. I used to watch Hubert Humphrey and Barry Goldwater on the floor of the Senate, liberal, conservative, robust, vigorous, energetic debates, and then retreat to the cloakroom and have a cup of coffee or something stronger and try to work things out and say, you know, you won that one, Hubert, but I got 59 votes next time. And I, because they understood that one day they would be in the majority of the minority, that the government had to go on, that sometimes that I saw George McGovern and Bob Dole achieve a compromise on food stamps. McGovern because he was concerned about the poor. Dole because he understood the needs of the poor but also understood the farmers of Kansas. And they came together with a compromise and a consensus. That's why I'm so honored that Father Ted is here tonight. Someone who in his life has demonstrated this willingness, this ability to reach out to people of all political persuasions, all faiths, because he knows within all, within all of us is something good. We are all children of God. <laughs>